Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm going to show you how to take a crossbow steel and attach it to the stock using hemp cord. If this doesn't interest you, turn off now because it's not going to get any better than that. If this does interest you, this is the video you need about how to connect the steel onto the stock and how to do it properly, the knots you use and the way to do it. First thing to do is to make sure that your stock and your bow fit together nice and tightly. So there's a tiny little bit of wobble there. I don't know if you can see it, but that's fine. You have a hole here, which is around about 22 millimeters in diameter, around about 10 to 12 centimeters back from the bow, something like that. The cordage you want to tie your bow onto the stock should be natural if you can get it. So this is a three twist hemp in fact here, but something like a linen or a cotton will do fine as long as it's strong enough. This is a three or a four mil uh, hemp, I think it's a four mil, but it's gotta be pretty strong and you'll see why in a little bit. But what you're doing is you're using natural fibre because it's very low in stretch. Man-made fibres tend, uh, Kevlar's an exception pretty much, but they tend to stretch after a bit of time. So if you put it under a whole load of tension, that stretch will basically just give up. And it's fine tomorrow, but in six months time, for instance, the bow will be wibbly wobbly all over the place in the stock, and that will make it almost impossible to shoot. If it is, do what they did with the natural fibre versions, because they loosen off too, is you hammer in a hardwood wedge between the bow and uh, the stock itself or between the stirrup and the bow. But I'll show you where to do that later on. It's one of those sort of bow maintenance issues that you can do. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go and start setting up to tie these two things together. These are the ingredients that we need to do this job laid out on top of the bow here. So we have around 10 meters of a natural cordage at three or four millimeters. I prefer hemp, this is four mil hemp. We've got our stirrup, then we've got, I don't know what you really call it, block of wood that goes between the stirrup uh, and the cordage. That goes in that position there, and we lash all of that together. And then the absolute magic ingredient that stops this being a nightmare and makes it really easy is a little bit of eight millimeter diameter brake pipe, copper brake pipe. So let's get going. Now what I do is I measure off about half the length of that tube, pinch the cord, I hold it there, and I just hammer it on the back of my vise here starting with the end where there is no cordage and I make myself a threading needle. So all it is, I've just beaten that copper tube around the cord and made it thin. I take the other end of my cord without the copper tube on. I take my stirrup, not paying too much attention how central this bow is at the moment because everything's going to shift around. And I now wrap that around the front there. So I've got a tail here of cord, and all I do is I twist my cordage and I pull that through. So it's kind of splicing it really, but the thing is you wrap it up with so many more layers going over the top, you don't need to worry about doing a proper splice. Thread it through three or four times, five times. Now I have a little black mark in the center of my string there, that is nominally the center of this whole arrangement. Get that, so visually, that's now in the center. I'm holding this now in the right position. I've got my needle here, and I'm threading it through the hole in the stock, and dropping it back through the stirrup. This is slow at the beginning, and it tangles, and it's annoying, but obviously the more you do it, the faster it will become, because you've got less cordage. But part of the secret here is to hold the tension on and keep the tension. So I've got a bit of tension here. You don't need loads because it's the knot which is going to sort this out and give the, the tension, you know, the, the final wrapping. It's not you doing it here. You'll give yourself a hernia if you keep trying to do it by pulling super, super tight. You won't do it. But it came under at the bottom, so I'm coming back the same way. The secret here is to always get it neat. You just follow the same order pattern. So I just repeat this, putting down the first row of cordage. So really, you start at the inside of the stock and then next one, next one, next one. So you just keep doing that until you've got your space filled with cordage. So I'll do that now and we'll take a, a break. We have the first layer of four cords here, and it looks like the whole space is full, but actually you'll be able to pull and fill 
this and just make sure it's really cramped down tight. So we're going to get a fifth layer in now, even though if you look at it, it looks like you can't. Now this needle makes life very, very easy. And for any of you out there who try it without that, you will wish that you'd known about that trick a while back. So you see I can pull it, I've filled that last, last gap on that side, and we're gonna fill this last gap here on this side as well now. Now this is beginning to get secure now. So I'm gonna move the position of the bow just to about here, because it's gonna make it a lot easier now for continued tying. So we have the stirrup just on this support here and the rest of the bow in this position. I'm gonna come back in now and do this over layer. And again, we'll break from this exciting action now and show you when this next layer is in. But remember, always keep it neat, otherwise it just looks like a mess and I don't think it will work so well. We have the next layer in now, and very often you'll see on, on medieval crossbows a crisscross at the front. So we've come in from the top here, and we're now in that position. So I'm now gonna to go to the bottom, and I'm gonna pull it around from the bottom over the top. And then back through the hole. And now we're going from the top down and in. So you can just see there the beginning of that cross. I'll do another layer of it. And I think I have enough cordage now to do one last turn over the top. You want to leave yourself about two and a half meters for the rest of the job. The hole through the stock is also nearly full now. Now, as you can see, it's fairly tight, but you can still move that cordage, and we want it as hard as iron. And that's where the knotting comes in. So I'm gonna pop the front of the crossbow stock back down onto the support. There's now some forces involved. And we have our needle, which is still straight. And you go down, you can wiggle it down, between the stock and the cordage, pull it through. But because the cordage is twisted, you see what I did with my finger here, as you pull and it's under tension, it will sort of untwist and knot. So you've just got to guide it. Put your hip against the back of the bow because it may well pull out of the, the vise here and you pull it tight. And now that cordage is right rammed down at the back of this whole set of lashings. Take your needle again, through, making sure it doesn't tangle and then just, you know, adjust it so it's nice and straight. You take a loop of it in your hand and it creates a loop hanging there in the air. You put your foot on it and you push down. And that is where you get a bit of tension. Not super hard yet, because obviously you're only doing one side and it's going to unbalance. Pull through the next one. Create that loop again. You pull down, and all the time now, it's getting much, much harder. Uh, I mean, it's easy to do, but I mean, the, the cordage is getting harder, the, the tension on it. This is my third return on this. I'm probably going to do about six or seven. It's just a matter of doing it by eye, really, and a little bit of experience. I can't tell you because your bow will be different to mine. But if you do about six or seven, you'll be about right. I'm on the last of them now. This is the seventh one, and I think that's enough. But now we have to do the figure of eight round here. And my needle is straight and so it's gonna be very difficult getting up and under those bundles. So I've got a nice round sort of ball end on the handle here, which is just perfect for this, but any bit of tube or anything. So I just do it here because it's all here. But a bit of tube, just tap it around. And now my lovely straight needle is curved. So this cordage comes out from under the bundle. So you take your needle passing up through the bow and you get it under the top branch of the cordage and you pull through. Don't tension it yet. 
Now you take it and you go down through the bottom branch of the cordage. Pushing it in, make sure it's snug. And now you can give it a little bit of standy. Before you embark on this, if you're not sure how strong your cord is and whether it will take you standing on it like that, work out how much standing on it you've got. Because you can repair these things when they're broken halfway through. But you know, it's much better if you don't. So again, just watch my hands and where we're going with them. I'm standing on it. These ones are not quite self-locking, but they're a lot better than the others. So you don't need to sort of keep any tension on it now because actually you're progressively putting more and more tension as you go anyway, and it sort of builds up as you're going along. So we did seven wraps for the first straight binding. And now I think we're probably going to do, there's room in it on this bow, for about seven, seven wraps on this binding. We're coming towards the end now. So this is my sixth binding. I'm going to put seven on each side. And the last threading that you do is just slightly different. So that's my sixth one. And now this time I come up just as I have on every other one. But now I separate their cord out and I take this and before I pulled it tight, I put it between the cord and all of the knot work. And so what happens is it will self lock when you tighten it. Now when I stand on that, it will stay exactly where it was. So that tightens and it doesn't loosen off. Our needle now is still curved, so I'm just going to straighten that. Pop it on the back of the vise here, any hard flat thing. Our needle is now flat and straight, and we can now do exactly the repeat on the other side. So I'm just going to thread it back through the hole now. The cord now comes out the other side, and we go down from the top again and repeat exactly the same process. Everything is a lot tighter now, and so it really is a bit of an effort to get it through. We're going to do our seven wraps on this side. And now, this time, you can actually stand a little bit harder to try and balance up the tension from side to side. But both sides of the bow are going to be fully down, and you're always going to get it to shift and balance the weight a little bit after a bit of time in a way. So although it might start life very slightly unbalanced, one side tighter than the other, I think you'll find that it settles down. I've never had a problem doing it like this at all. Uh, it seems to work very well. And this is the last of the straight wraps on this side now. And I have just enough cordage, but I also have a straight needle. So I'm just gonna bend that back around. Coming up from the underneath through the top layer of cordage. and then back through the bottom layer of cordage. Like I say, it's getting tight, so you've sort of got to wiggle it a bit now. And again, we're going to go for our seven wraps now. The first six being the regular kind, and the last kind, self-locking, so where we thread it through, just like we did on the first side, thread it back through itself as it's going in. I'm just coming up for the last now. So this is the seventh on this side. And I bring it up and through as I always would. And then back through the loop and under the bottom branch of cordage. And now it's going to tighten on itself just as we did on the first side and self lock. And we have just enough cordage to be able to do my trick. There we are. And then we straighten our, our needle again because we're going to return it back through the way it came. So it's straight and we're going back through the hole. And this is just to cinch it off and stop it anything going anywhere. So I've got my needle, it goes through the top. There is no way on the planet you are getting that through. So you actually hammer it through. You'd think it immediately that it would break the cordage, it would cut it at that point. It's never actually happened. Uh, but I am conscious of it, so I try to tap it through, and now it's just through on the other side, and I can get a pair of pliers onto it and wiggle it out. There we go. I'm holding it there to stop that twisting that will happen otherwise, 
and now popping my hip against it and everything is tight and then just cutting it off being careful not to nick any of the other cords and we are there so there we have it easy when you know how well, apparently still quite hard work it is now completely lashed on it is absolutely rock solid these things feel like iron now which is what you want so you have your bow tied to your stock and there are two things that can happen either now or in the future one you may not have got it tight enough or it could slacken off in the future if that's the case just at that section there between the stirrup and the bow get a small hardwood wedge an oak wedge and drive it in on each side and that will just tension everything up it will spread it out pull it all out and everything will get nice and tight again that's the first thing that can happen. The other is you take your beautifully done bow, you shoot it and it shoots to the right or you shoots to the left. What can you do about it? Well, one side of you says, well, it's all fixed together. There's nothing you can do about it. Because the thing is, it's shooting to the right or the left because there is an imbalance between the two arms. Either that there is a difference in distance, but you've measured that, so that's not the case. It'll be a difference in manufacture. One side is slightly different to the other. That's just the way it is with anything handmade but it shoots to the left, let's say. Well, how do you fix that? Well, it's actually, it's not difficult. So you take something like this, which is a copper-faced mallet. Yeah, or something similar, something softer than the steel. And you wanna hit this bow. If it shoots left, knock the bow left. Shoots right, knock the bow right. You don't wanna hit it like that because the force line is just gonna bend it. You wanna hit it sort of along the, the arc of the bow. So you hit with your hammer and you, do that. And you knock it through a couple of times. I've just moved it about a millimetre across that way, so I'm going to do it the other way. Send it back. Then we're about in the middle again. When I shoot this bow, I expect it to shoot straight. If it doesn't, I'll knock it from one side to the other. If it shoots left, knock left. Shoots right, knock right. That's the way you solve the problem. Thank you very much. I hope that was useful.